So, so far, if I'm able to run my project, it runs on my device. And I see the starting point welcome screen. And from the welcome screen, I can go over to uh, the help screen, which doesn't do too much yet, but then I can go back. And then from the welcome screen, I can go over to wave one or level one, whatever you want to call it. And then there's the time limit that's happening. The user at the moment doesn't know that the time limit is happening, so we'll set that up. And that needs two things. One is a text box on the screen where the time will be displayed. And the other is the code that fills in that text box as the time passes. So just to orient ourselves, we want to be in level one. We want to be in wave one. So switch over to the scene for wave one. In my case, my layers are called actions and layer one. Let's change layer one um, to call it um, sprite one. One of your little creatures, one of your things that you're going to be tapping on, it's on its own layer. And um, that's what we will want pretty much for all of our little things running around, something on its own layer. So I've got the one creature so far on one layer. I'm going to lock all my layers. So you can click the little lock symbol right there, lock them all. Create a new layer. We'll call it um, Countdown Timer. So a layer for actions, a layer for the sprite, a layer for the timer, basically a layer for each individual thing so that we have the most control over our content. And in the countdown layer, I'm going to get the text tool right up here. I'll pick some cool fonts and all of that later, but I'll just leave it as is Family Sands. Uh, and yes, Undertale did borrow the names of Sans and Serif from the names of fonts. Trivia, if you didn't know that. So right here, we're going to leave it as just whatever Sans family. And dynamic text is the important thing to have that set as, because we can have different kinds of text, static, dynamic, or input. The one that we want is dynamic, in that this whatever text is in this box will dynamically change as my timer um, changes. And you get that when you select the text tool. Input text would be if I'm going to, if, if we program it for it to ask you what your name is, we would have a box of input text where the person can type. And static text is the simplest of all. It doesn't really have that much use. So make sure you've got your text as dynamic text. And these fonts and all of that, you can change that later. But let's say I'm going to draw a box at the top somewhere. And I'll put it. somewhere at the top there, and we'll just put X. The, the time is going to be up here. You can change the font size and the font style and all of that if you want later. But I just want a box where the time will appear, and there's just a placeholder X, so that when I program it to actually show the time, it changes, and then I can see that the, uh, the time is changing. Just like most things that we have to deal with via code, we need to uh, give this an instance name. So after I've typed it there on the screen, you can then select it. And up here on the properties, there's no instance name yet. Let's give this an instance name of um, Wave 1 Timer. 
so I can have different time, um, different timers for different screens. So a different object and a different scene on a different layer, and then we would need a different instance name. It's a different instance of a thing on the screen. So here, wave one timer. That's my instance name for that object on the screen. So we've got the little text box that we drew on the screen. OK, check. We've got an instance name so that the code knows what it is. Check. And then third item, we'll write the code to start filling in this box with our time. I'm going to switch over to the actions, uh, actions layer, actions panel. OK, so we have previously written some of this code. And we've got a spot where we've got a timer limit starts at 10. Well, that's what I want to display on screen. I want it to say that you're starting at 10 seconds, and it's going to go down to 0, and then time's up. So we'll say, in my case, it's line 8. It, if, you're, it's not, if on yours it's not line 8, that's OK, as long as you find the spot that says var timer limit equals 10 not game timer, timer limit. We'll give it a new line after timer limit. We'll make a little comment. We'll say now display the timer limit on screen. That box on the screen has a name wave one timer dot text equal to so now what we're saying here is we've got some sort of object uh, wave one timer which is that box on the screen it has a property of text objects have a lot of different properties like what's the size of it what's the color of it What's the text in it? So we have object.property in this case, technically. So now we display the timer on screen. So we're saying uh, text object, change the uh, text property to the variable so that right now it says x but it's an object, a text object, dynamic text. And it has a property, text, which currently says x. I don't want that box to say x. I want it to say what, what your maximum time is. So we're going to say equal or set the value of the text property of that text box to something, my maximum time. What should I put there then that, this, that represents my maximum time? The text box equals something, some amount of time, maximum time. What might that be? How much time do we have on wave one to, to zap the little bugs? We have 10 seconds, but it's timer limit, exactly. So we have 10 seconds, which is being stored right here under timer limit. So we're saying, let's put the text of that box to be the maximum time, which is timer limit, which is currently 10. So timer limit equal to timer limit. Now, unfortunately, there's a slightly little weird thing that, again, uh, many programming languages are very specific. And like we said over here, when we invent a timer limit, it, we have to have it of a type number. And when we're talking about the internal timer that's keeping track, it's a type timer. Wave one timer is technically of type text. We're trying to put in a number. Timer limit is a number. We're trying to put a number into a box that assumes text. So this makes sense of what we're trying to do, but technically behind the scenes, we also have to convert that number into text. So we're going to add one more thing here. I'm going to back up and say um, str
string, capital S, and then parentheses around the variable. This variable, this container, holds the number, the number 10. But this box holds text. So string converts things into text. Uh, so we're saying convert that number into a text and put it into that box. Save it and run it in the debugger or run it in the um, device. And you should see then that your text box eventually, uh, instead of it saying X, it should change itself to be the number of our maximum time, our timer limit. So we didn't add very much at the moment. It was three things. The box on screen with an instance name, wave one timer, and then the code that says that box has a text value of that variable. He'll be with you one moment. Let me just confirm my code works, and I'll be there one moment. So I'll debug that. So once I confirm this works, we I'll, I'll check that yours works. It's not going to count down yet. So don't expect it to count down yet. All I wanted to display is instead of the word instead of the letter X, I wanted to display the um, the time. Here it is right here. So obviously on screen it's one thing. But on my device, it should then say 10. Because I've said I've got a box that without the code running, it's X. But once the code runs, it says text box equals timer limit, which is 10. And if I play that again, I see right there 10. It's not going to count down yet. That's OK. But let's just confirm that uh, that works. There's the code so far there. And let's confirm that works.
try and do that for the time. I'll leave it out. <laughs> This is the next one that I'm trying to do. Uh, I'm trying to do it like that. I'm trying to do like that. I'm trying to do like keep running. So we can spin it. So I'm trying to keep running. I'm actually going to do it. Is it more quite a regular process? All right, everyone, let's go on. So um, for a few of you that it might not be displaying, uh, I'll check you a little bit more one-on-one -on -one in a moment. But what you might want to triple check is your font. It looks like if you have it 
uh, anything besides this basic sans font right here, it might not fully work because you have to embed the font and other other stuff. So if if you didn't see your number 10 on your screen, you know, confirming that it works, you, you'll see a number 10 on the screen, not an X, but the number 10. If it didn't work, you might try to change your font over to say sans, underscore sans. It's the very first one at the very, very, very top. So if you have any other font, it might not work. So for the short answer at the moment, if you don't have sans on there, set it to sans. If it still doesn't work, I'll check you a little bit later. I'm going to move on here. And again, usually what I'm what I'll what I'm doing is that if the code, um, if you need to compare my code with your code, you'll be able to do that. So I'm going to move on. Well, what we've got going on here is that this um, this time that appears, it needs to count down. It starts at ten. So if we go back to our actions code, what we're saying here is into the text box, we're going to set the text to be equal to timer limit, which is 10. Well, that needs to count down. What's paying attention to the time changing is one of these functions. Scrolling down, we've got the uh, game timer countdown. This is what's keeping track of the time decreasing. So we're saying increase the elapsed time every second. OK, well, actually, before that, we're going to have something happening as well. Display the current time minus the maximum time. Actually, backwards. Display the maximum time minus the current time. So we saw in, in the down here on the debugger that every time one second passes we saw that the number was going one two three four five so that is increasing upwards but we've got this time on screen that starts at 10 and it needs to then decrease downwards so if we're starting with 10 and then we take away one second the timer will say nine and then it loops one more time. OK, and then it takes it away one more. It becomes 8, and then 7, and so forth. So before we increase the time, then we're going to have it display on screen. This is inside of the function fn game timer countdown. In my case, it's line 25. But find your spot where it says uh, function fn game timer countdown. So we're going to say wave one timer dot text is equal to string. Because once again, we're dealing with numbers, but we want to display that on screen in a box that is supposed to hold letters, text, also known as a string. So we need to convert it into a string and then display it on screen. And what we're displaying on screen is our timer limit minus game timer elapsed. All right, so on the previous line, we set it up that it starts at 10. And if yours worked, it stayed 10 forever. It never changed. Well, it changes now in this function. This is the function that's keeping track of time passing. So now we're saying, whatever the time is, started at 10, started at 10, minus whatever current time we have right now, has one second passed, have two seconds passed, have three seconds. So if we start at 10, minus 3 is 7. seven the countdown has gone to 7. When, when it goes, when it counts up to 6, okay, 10 minus 6 is 4, so the timer says 4, so it's slowly counting down to 0. We saw in the debugger that eventually it went up to number 11. It went too far, right? Well, doing it, doing it before the time we incremented here will be correct. It will be 10, 9, 8, 0, and then it ends. 
So let's debug this. Save it and debug this part, and let's see if your timer starts to count down when when you when you run it. So I'm going to debug it, and again, this is what appears on your device. So you want to run this on the device, and then go to your wave one, and then we'll see if that timer decreases. So let me check it on mine here. I'm going to press play. Um, I see right there 10, 9, 8, 7. So now it's starting to decrease on screen, not up there, but on my actual device here. I'm seeing it going down 2, 1, 0, times up, and it goes to the boss. So then on the boss, eventually I need to do something similar. But on the boss, then after, then time runs out, and then I go to the you lose screen. So that line of code right there is where um, it makes the timer on screen count down. Internally, behind the scenes, it was working in that there's a time limit and it goes down to zero. We go to the next scene. But now we've got this line of code here where on screen we see the timer go down. Question? It it's supposed to. That's that's the code. Question?
Okay, so at this point, if you've got this uh, text appearing on screen, that's good. Uh, you've got this uh, 10 that is counting down further uh, until time runs out. So we need to do something similar to the boss in the boss level. Uh, we're going to see a, a little bit of a repetition of this in that in the boss level, I need a box on the screen to display my time. That box needs an instance name. And then I need code that says change that little box dynamically as my time runs out. So let's set it up again the same way. Let's first go back to the boss scene. Scene boss. We need a box for the timer. So grab your text box. It seemed like um, we can't quite pick any cool font at the moment. So let's just confirm that your font is um, sans, just a plain old sans. You can pick a color if you want, but also the size of your box here, it's going to matter because if you've got, let's say, 60 second countdown, but the box is really small, it might not fit your time. So that's why when I drew it, I just made it big like that to say, like, you know, it's going to appear in there, however. I guess I didn't think about it too much because I've done this several times, but the size of the box is going to dictate what's in the box. So if your text doesn't appear, it might be your box is too small. 
So there's the size of the box plus the size of the font in the box. If your font is really big, then maybe your box is too small to display the font. So I just chose some stuff. Just put whatever you want in there. I'm just putting Z. I'll put time. It doesn't matter. This Whatever text is in this box will dynamically change when our code changes it. And I'll actually show you a way to make it say more than just a number in a moment. So let's just say my timer is there. Just put it wherever you want on screen. It needs an instance name. So we'll say, uh, we'll call this boss, boss timer display. Boss timer, or just t boss timer, right? Yeah, boss timer. Over back on, on wave one, we called it wave one timer, right? Wave one. So for the boss, boss timer is an easy one. So yep, we'll call that boss timer. And if we had more than one boss, each one needs to have a different name. So that could be boss one, boss two, boss three, or just whatever other names. OK, so I got the box. I have my basic settings for it. Most importantly, I've got the instance name, boss timer. Um, I kind of forgot a step zero before adding my my timer on screen. Anyone see what I forgot before I put the timer? Yeah. Um, was it create a layer? Create a layer for it, yes. So this will probably work as is, but let's follow the best practices. Whoops, I should have put that onto its own layer. So this gives us the chance that we can actually do some cut and paste. If you cut it, control X, make a layer right-click, paste in place, we have Control-C, Control-V, sure. But Control-V will paste it in the center of your design. I might not want that. Right-click, paste in place, or Control-Shift-V will paste it exactly from where you took it. And that's so useful when you're dealing with, with elements, when you're copying them and moving them around. Paste in place. So that was a little mistake there. We have Boss Timer. We have boss, we have actions, and I would recommend to leave actions as your topmost layer. And that's just for you if you want to get back to your actions code quickly, you'll always find it easily at the top, especially with something complex with a lot of sprites or a lot of um, things on screen. Oftentimes actions is the very first layer music is the very last layer and then in between is this is these other things and the order does matter because things at a at a higher order will cover things at a lower order so if you've got the timer above the boss when the boss gets bigger and bigger eventually it's going to come at you on the screen eventually when the boss is so big on screen if you have timer above it the timer will still always be visible even if this boss is really really big if you've got the timer below the boss, eventually the boss will cover the timer. So that has an instance name. Okay, then we'll go to our, our actions panel. So very similar to before, on, the, on wave one, we had some sort of time limit. And then we had a function that deals with the time limit increasing. Well, similar to what we did on the previous scene, after we establish the maximum amount of time, boss timer limit, and we'll say boss timer.text is equal to so instead of it just saying timer, it'll say the number. But it has to behave like a string. It has to be sort of reprogrammed. Instead of a number being displayed in a text box, we'll have a word, a string displayed in a text box, which is boss timer limit.
So that's pretty much exactly as what we had on the previous scene when we had wave one. We had a layer for a timer, a timer on that layer with an instance name, and then the code that first of all said, let's display our time on screen. Save it and run it, save it and debug it, and let's see if at least it says the number four on screen. It won't count down yet, but we'll add that in a moment easily. But now it should say the number four when you get to the boss, because you have four seconds when you get to the boss scene. So try that out. Save it, run it, go through the game, go to the boss, and see if you see a number four. Let me try out mine. Access of possibly undefined text through a reference of type static flash timer. Hmm, what's that? Boss timer text. Uh, string. Um, Is that the same one? Yes. All right. Let me just confirm what that was. Let's see here, boss timer. I'm going to confirm that it has the proper name. Let's see up here. This is dynamic text box timer, family, sans. Looks fine. And then over here on the boss, boss timer dot text. Okay, yeah, that's that's exactly it. Okay, that's a good point there. Whoops, we called two things the same thing. In the code, we're saying, let's create a brand new variable called boss timer. But wait a minute. On screen, we have an instance of something called the same thing. So that's not right, actually. This thing up over here, so boss timer, we're already using the name of that thing. That's the problem. We're already using the name of that in the code, and we also added it to the text box. So I'll just fix this here to say boss timer underscore txt. As long as it's got a different name, then this shouldn't be giving the issue, because a moment ago, I had two things that had the same instance name, the box on the screen, as well as when we created the variable in the code, they both had the same name. OK, so let's fix that. This box here that's going to appear on screen, make sure that's got the, the instance name of something different, which I'm putting it as boss timer underscore text txt. You could spell t-e-x-t, that's fine, as long as it's all consistent. Then our code over here. Then logically our code over here now, this is boss timer txt equals text. So it was right there. It was right there. The issue was that you're calling something to put this 
the text into it, but over here you're also doing something else with it, so confusion. And here's how we fix that. So every object has its own instance name. These are these are objects as well. Variables are objects. And these sorts of variables have their own instance name, sort of. And we're using the same name twice. Okay, that's an error. So now try to save and run that. Let's see what happens. Debug. No error. So you see there that it's easy to lose track of some of these things, even though it was right there, right in front of my eyes. And I didn't notice it there. So it was just changing the instance name. And no more error. And then let's see what I get here. Mine says still object. That's why you raise your hand, and I'll come and help you out. But let me just confirm mine over here. So I'm going to click play. I've got my time over here. Time is running out. When that time runs out, I get to the boss, and then it says a number four. Now, it doesn't count down yet, which is normal, because, again, we haven't programmed that. This reminds you that computers are dumb. They don't know what you want. You have to program them exactly. I saw the number four for a moment, but it never counted down because I didn't program it to count down, which comes next in a moment. So um, did everyone see the number four? Did anyone have a little trouble? All right, so we'll do a little bit more, then we'll take a break. Uh, that number uh, simply appears on screen. It doesn't count down. But maybe I wanted to say the word timer and then the number four. Do you notice how this says the word time, but then when we run the code, it just says the number. Um, I wanted to say time, colon, and then the number. 
So right here, all that we've done is we've said display the time. We can also make it say words or exclamation points or symbols or whatever if we do it like this inside of this string. So we're saying the string command is turning whatever's in the parentheses. Whatever's in the parentheses, it's turning it into a word. So we're taking the number four, turning it into a word. What we can also do, let me write it first and then, I'll, and then we'll do it. We can also have it say a message, time, colon, space. We can also make it say the word literally, time, and then the number. So whatever is inside of the parentheses, turn it into a word, and then put it into the text property of that box, of that object. So we can make it say what we want. Let's do this in double quotes. So it's two double quotes, whatever message. Don't forget a space here, and then plus a number. If you forget the space there, it won't be catastrophic. But what will happen is it will remind you that computers are dumb. Because on screen, you will say you will see time colon no space four. You'll see the number right next to the word. So you have to literally put a space, because I want a space between the word and the number, and then it'll obey. It'll put it there logically like a real word plus a space plus a number. So what that's doing there, the purpose of that is that it's showing the word time and then the number. Well, for it to actually start to count down, very similar to what we did on the other function, we've got this function in this scene, function boss timer countdown, very similar to the other scene, similar to what we're doing here. We needed to display the the time counting down. So once again, this is boss timer underscore text dot text. This up here is to display the time as soon as the scene starts. But this code here is as long as my time is ticking away, now we'll also display on screen the, the numbers. So we'll have it again, string. quotes, time, colon, space, plus something. Okay, that looks almost 99% the same as before. This will be slightly different. But we're saying again, there's a box on the screen. Let's change the text to some sentence, which will be time plus, just like on the previous scene, we had the maximum time minus the current time. And I'll put this in a couple more parentheses here. It's sort of like doing a little math. Right, when you do a mathematical equation, when you have stuff in parentheses, you do them in a certain order. We have boss timer limit minus boss timer elapsed. Well, this sort of little math equation was the same as on the previous scene. When the time was ticking away, we had the maximum time minus the current time. So on scene on wave one, we started at 10. 10 minus one second that passed, nine. And then two seconds passed, 10 minus two, eight. And then three seconds passed, 10 minus three, seven. And it's counting down. Here, now we've got four. Boss timer limit is four. One second has passed, four minus one, three. And then it loops again. Two seconds have passed, four minus two, two. One more second passed, three seconds. Four minus three, one, you've got one second left. And then four minus four, zero, time runs out and it goes to the uh, boss ending bad, or game ending bad, whatever. <coughs> and so one little thing we jazzed it up with is by saying the word time and then the number. So save and run that, and if it works, take a break. If it didn't, let's figure it out. It's 2.15, we'll take a break until 2.25. Quick 10 minute break, but just confirm that yours works. And if it does take a break, if it doesn't, we'll figure it out. I'll put my code in the folder also if you want to compare it that way. And remember, for the assignment, you are free to look at my code, to borrow it, to build upon it, as long as it's then your unique graphics and sound and such as we go forward. Let me just confirm mine works. Let's see here. Tap Frenzy starts. I press play. I have the 10 second counting down. This reminds me, maybe I'll just put it for five seconds. I don't want to wait every 10 seconds for this to finish. 10 seconds finishes. 
Then the boss, time. It's got the word time. It's got the number, and it's counting down. Time's up, and then I go to the bad end. So it should now display on screen.